check out this easy, inexpensive way to convert your clear glass to frosted and learn from my mistakes. These Ikea cabinets were the perfect size for my food pantry, but they had some clear glass. So I tried a couple of the options for covering it up so you don't see the mess. This is the first one. It is a curtain and a tension rod. And it worked for me pretty well for a while, but I decided I wanted to have frosted. So I'm gonna take you through what I did. Okay, clean the glass very well and make sure you get all the edges really good and the corners because that's where you're gonna have problems with the film not sticking if you don't get it really, really clean. So I had some residue from my paper towel and I waited till it was really dry and then just kind of dusted it off. Product reviewers complained about the bubbles and they are really hard to see when the product is still wet. When it dries and the light is shining on it, you'll notice it, so be careful. Here, I do have a little bit of bubbling and I really think that's on me. I worked the middle pretty hard, but the edges, I just didn't see the bubbles, so I kept stopped, but um, I would recommend keep working the edges, um, even if you think you got the bubbles, but really, in real life, it's almost impossible to see in certain lights. I had to work to get the image to show the bubbles, but yeah. So keep squeegeeing. I used a credit card first time, but I'm actually gonna use a squeegee the second time and see if it makes a difference. I could peel this and redo it, but I don't think it's that big a deal. Yeah, the instructions say to cut it an inch wider and then trim it after, but I tried that and it didn't work as well for me as trimming it perfect size ahead of time. So we've got 12 and 3 eighths here, just shy. So if you have the same cabinet, I'm going with 12 and 3 eighths here. It's actually just shy of that. Okay, I ended up making a little snip at about 36 and 3 sixteenths. That's where I really think the right measurement is. We'll see. So I'm gonna make a crease line there and then I'm gonna cut along the crease line so it's nice and even. Now this is the brand I bought on Amazon. Because of the size of this, it's easiest for me to fold it in half and make a fold line um, so it makes a good guide. Okay, so I'm just making sure the side is even with the other side. Um, both sides before I make the crease mark. Just want to make sure these are lined up so that I know the crease will go straight across. I'm just going to run my finger across and make a crease there, um, probably with my finger now. I actually creased it with the edge of this uh, metal thing and that's how my crease looks. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut along the crease. And there we go. And I found that this just glides like as if you're cutting um, wrapping paper, it just glides across, so you don't actually have to squeeze the scissor once you get it started. And this is a good example as to why I didn't use the X-Acto knife the second time around. The first time I tried it, I got this like wonky, crooked line all the way down, and I didn't like it. And this is why I recommend creasing it and using the scissors instead of an X-Acto knife. And these cabinets are a little tricky because um, you have to get it exact or you'll either have a gap or it'll lift a little at the edge. But honestly, even with this small gap with the first one I did, it doesn't bother me too much, but I'm gonna try and get the second cabinet a little more perfect. And make sure you uh, cut your notch so you can make your fold or crease on the edge you did not cut so that you can line this up and know that it's straight all the way across to the other end so you can make your crease. Mm. This has pretty good memory, so I went across it a few times to make sure that the crease is nice and um, noticeable while I'm cutting. Okay, then I'm test fitting it before I take anything off, and the top to bottom looks pretty perfect, but I noticed um, left to right, it's just a little wide, um, and I don't want that to bubble or roll up the edges, so I'm gonna trim a tiny bit off 
which works perfect because I kind of made a boo-boo when I was cutting. Here is the boo-boo that I'm gonna... Okay, now comes the satisfying part. And one reviewer on the product said that she used Windex, that, and I was already hoping that I wouldn't have to mix up some soapy water and find a, another bottle. So this is what I did with the other one, and it seemed to work great. So there's a rough side, and then there's a shiny uh, slick side, and you're gonna get a piece of scotch tape, stick it to the slick side, and that works wonders, oops, for trying to get the backing off. And there you can see, it just works that easy. I have heard a lot of people having a hard time getting this off. So I use the trick and it's super simple. The moisture is what makes this really stick. So make sure you go heavy handed and get all the corners and the edges. And after you peel the backing, just go ahead and put the slick side down and start pushing the bubbles to the outer edge. If you wait too long to get it on there, it may peel back like this. So what you wanna do is just peel it back, re-wet it, and start this moving again. This piece was the tight piece on the roll, so I just kept working it. And it turned out just fine, as long as you keep working on it. With the squeegee, last time I used a credit card type of thing. One thing I wanna point out is this discoloration on the frosted film. Uh, don't worry about that. That's just that moisture got on both sides of the film instead of just one, and when it dries, it'll turn out just fine. You won't even see it. I also recommend you dry these corners as you go because it soaks into the wood there, and it's not real wood, as we know. So keep your eye out for these teeny, tiny little bubbles. It's, the big ones are obvious and you're gonna push those out. It's the little tiny ones that later are gonna show up that you didn't realize you missed. It's hard to capture these little bubbles on the inside there. So those are barely noticeable now, but you will see them at the end. So don't forget to work them out all the way to the edge. It takes a while, but keep going. I actually think the gift card works better. Once you cut the first one, you'll have this scrap left over. And so then you can just line it up over the edge here. Um, better than that, but I'm just trying to do it with one hand here. And then cut the little notch to the right width and cut it on the other side as well. And then make another crease. And that way you don't have to measure this time as long as your other piece worked well. So here's my soft crease, it's still kind of rounded, and this is my sharper crease, which I've used at the edge of a bottle opener. And there's your crease to put along. Okay, then I test fit it. Okay, now I'm just going back and cutting just the tiniest little sliver off of here because just a little bit too wide and I want it to fit nice and flush but I don't want there to be a gap. If it's a little too fat then I've been just trimming it down in little tiny tiny bits. There's how it looks right when I put the plastic on and I'm gonna get the bubbles out. Hoping I can show you what I mean by hidden bubbles. There's one there and it's really hard to see while it's wet. And then when you push the squeegee. You see that tiny little guy moving? Those are the bubbles that everybody is complaining about that show up after the fact. They are really hard to see when it's wet, but if you're diligent and you keep looking for them or just maybe gliding across. Oh, there we picked up a couple. Um, so just keep pushing and it seems like a waste of time, but it, it looks so much better if you're picky. Here's another example. It looks like there's nothing. And you push and you'll have some bubbles. So, right here. Is there anything? Yes. Okay. 
show up more when it's dry, so keep working it. So here's an example of my earlier one, one of the first ones I did, and it has a lot of spots on it. But this is a better depiction of what it looks like in most light. So if you have some bright shining light on it, um, you can see the little specks, but if you are in a normal light situation, then it looks pretty good. My last one looks awesome. And here is the final result. I really like it. And you can still see, you know, that we have food in there or whatever. And if it's really pressed up close to the glass, you can you know, get a good idea of what it is, of the leaf ends. But I think it looks so much nicer than the curtain. Hope this helped. I hope this was helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and have a blessed day.